This video has been brought to you by the Fresno Mycology Society. Today we're going to show you how to construct a sterile glove box, the purpose of which is to provide you with a sterile workroom of sorts to perform everything from agar petri dish preparation to sterile spore printing. This build is a cheaper and less intensive project than building or buying a laminar flow hood, which is the other popular option for creating a sterile workplace. For this build you will need a plastic tote, making sure that the plastic is clear because you will need to be able to see into it. Another nice feature to look for are the lid clamps. Then you will need some sort of short piping, these will serve as the glove ports. For this build we purchased both male and female threaded ABS adapters, we use 3 inches here, because we could comfortably fit my hand through them, but looking back, I would have opted for a larger size. One, because my gloves had huge openings, and two, because I couldn't get my arm in past my elbow, and being that this is a fairly large tote, I could have used the extra reach. Moving on, you will also need gloves, make sure they are long enough for you to reach all the way across the inside of the box. Then you will need some plastic epoxy to secure the pipe ports of the box. And lastly, you will need to get some foam weather stripping. Now that we have everything we need, we can begin the build. The first thing you're going to want to do is to mark out your holes for the glove port. One trick to figure out your hole space is to put your arms down at your side and bend your elbow upward to a 90 degree angle as if you are looking down at your hands. The distance between your hands is going to be around how far apart you're going to want to make the center marks for your holes. Once you have your center point drawn, go ahead and align the pipe fittings and trace out the inner diameter of the pipe. I would highly recommend tracing the inner diameter because of the simple fact that you can always widen your hole after you make the first cut. But if your hole is too widely cut, you're going to be doing some improvising to fill the gap between the box wall and your tubing. Now that we have traced out the holes, we can begin cutting. There are a million ways to cut a hole, I wasn't able to find a hole saw, so I'll use this hand dremel tool with a cutting disc instead. This method can be a little messy, but don't worry, we're going to go back and send it all out. Now that the holes have been sanded out, I'm going to go ahead and thread the male adapter into the hole from the outside. Now I'm going to screw the female adapter from the inside, making a nice tight fit. To keep these ports from slipping or rotating, we're going to mix up this plastic epoxy. Being that this was two-part epoxy, it's not going to be pretty, but it'll do the trick. Now this stuff dries pretty fast, so don't take your time with this step. We didn't mention this ingredient in the parts list, but it's a good idea to make a nice smooth bead on the inside of the piping with some silicone. This is going to ensure that no airborne contaminants will enter this way. After our glue has set, we can now attach the gloves. It's a good idea to seal the tape seams where air might be able to travel. Now that our glove ports are nice and airtight, we can move on to making the lid airtight as well. To do this, we can simply add this weatherproofing window foam along the top edge where the lid seals against the box. Despite adding this extra thickness to the lid, the lid clamps on the sides of the box still snap tight, which saved us from having to clamp everything down. And voila! Your DIY Stiller glove box is complete and ready for some high intensity science. Looking back on this build, I would have opted for larger piping just to have a little more wiggle room and reach. Also one problem I ran into was that whenever I applied any pressure onto the wall of the box where the glove ports are, which happened a lot when I reached around, I would push the top edge of the box off of the lid tracks, thereby letting outside air inside the box. To fix this, I had another strip of weatherproofing foam along the outside edge of the lid. I also thoroughly taped that part of the lid to the wall it rested on. Now it's not going anywhere, and I'm confident that it's totally airtight. 
Remember to thoroughly sterilize every inch inside the surface of the box, including the gloves, before you perform any work inside the box that requires totally aseptic conditions. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, then put them down below. You can also follow us on Facebook and Flickr or on our website at fresnomycology.org. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this in the future, you can donate to the Fresno Mycology Society on Patreon. Thank you.